Hey, Miss Miklos here, and in tonight's lecture, we are talking about arithmetic series. And if you think back to the first lecture in this chapter, we said a series is when we are adding together the terms of a sequence, or in other terms, finding the sum. So this is what our examples are going to look like. Negative 4 plus negative 1 plus 2, and we need to find the sum after 300 terms. Okay, so what this means to us is negative 4, negative 1, and 2 are the terms of a sequence. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. Is this arithmetic? And we could see that our common difference is any term minus the previous term. So negative 1 minus, there we go, minus negative 4 is 3. So it does look like it is arithmetic. I'm adding 3 to get to negative 1 and then 3 to 2. The problem is not only would I need to find all those terms of the sequence, so 300 terms, but then somehow I would need to add them all together, which would be a giant, giant waste of time. So there must be a better way. And of course there's a better way, and in fact, we are so brilliant, we are going to derive the sum formula for arithmetic series together right now. And yes, here is a giant hint for me that this is probably going to be on a quiz. So back to deriving this. Okay, my first step, the sum of n terms is adding all the terms together. So a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus dot 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 a sub n. Okay, so that's just the definition of a series is that I'm adding all the terms together to find the sum. And building on what we learned last time, we learned that I can really rewrite a sub 2 as a sub 1 plus d. We can rewrite a sub 3 as a sub 1 plus 2d. a sub 4 was a sub 1 plus 3d, and in fact, we said a sub n was a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so that is very similar to what we did last time. Now, this is going to be the step that is going to be slightly different. Okay, if I'm looking at this, I notice that we have a ton of a sub 1s. In fact, it appears that we have an a sub 1 for each term in our sequence. So I'm going to say that we have n a sub 1s because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and those were for 4 terms, and then I would have one for every other term. So I have n a sub 1s. The other thing I notice is that we have a massive amount of d's. d, 2d, 3d, n minus 1 times d. So what I'm noticing there is I have a common factor of d, and if I took d out, I'm left with those coefficients 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n minus 1. Okay, so just kind of to recap what we did here, I noticed I had an a sub 1 in each term, so that's where n times a sub 1 comes from. I also noticed we have a ton of d's, and if I group those together, I factored out our GCF, which was d, and I was left with the sum of all the coefficients. And at this point in time, this leads us to recall Gauss's formula, and we haven't talked about Gauss yet, and we're about to. Okay, Carl Friedrich Gauss was a very, very famous and important German mathematician. And in fact, when he was young, I think it was when he was like seven or eight, he was sitting in his elementary school, and it was one of those days where the kids were going crazy and the teacher just was angry and wanted to keep them busy. So he made all of his second graders do a problem up on the board. And the problem up on the board that he wrote was to find 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 all the way up to 100. And we think that that isn't that tough, but if you think back to the 1700s and a world without calculators, I know that is slightly shocking to us, 
but this would take a very long time for little kids to do. Unless you were a genius like Gauss. Because what Gauss noticed is that we had all these pairs. Okay, 1 and 100. We know this is really 99. 2 times 99. If we notice, all of those end up equaling the same sum. They all equal 101. So he kind of noticed if you add the first and the last term together, okay, it equals 101. If I could write 101, that would be helpful. There we go. Okay, 101. And he noticed that there were 50 pairs. Okay, so he did 101 times 50 and figured out that the sum is 550. Okay, and he did this almost immediately, which of course did not please his teacher as the teacher wanted some peace and quiet. So we're going to use this concept now and say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus x is equal to x times x plus 1 over 2. And if you guys recall what we just what we previously had on the screen was 50 times 101 where we were adding to 100 50 came from 100 divided by 2 and then 101 came from 50 or I'm sorry from 100 plus 1. So this is really the formula we're going to use. Now, in this case I need to think what is our last term? And we might notice that x in this case is n minus 1 because that is the last term in our sequence that we are adding together. So what this tells me is that s sub n equals n times a sub 1 plus d times if x is n minus 1 then x plus 1 would be n minus 1 plus 1 or n over 2. And we can write this in an even more simplified manner because I notice that I have an n in both of these terms. And so what we're going to do, we're actually going to take out an n over 2 because that's going to eliminate this fraction here. If I took an n over 2 out of n times a sub 1, I am left with 2 times a sub 1 because if I distribute, n over 2 times 2 becomes n. Plus, when I go ahead and take out an n over 2 here, I'm left with d times n minus 1. So I'm going to write this n minus 1 times d. So this is the second formula that we need to know. Now, some things that you guys might actually notice. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and write this off to the side here. Okay. 2 a sub 1 is like a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And you guys might recognize that a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d is a sub n. So another version of this formula that we can use is s sub n equals n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. Now, this second version is really just a shortcut, okay? And I can only use this sometimes, the only time I can use this version, if I'm trying to find the sum of 13 terms and I actually know what the 13th term is. If I'm trying to find the sum of 13 terms and I know the fifth term, this formula doesn't help me whatsoever. Okay, so this is our go-to formula that I can use every single time. This is a good shortcut that can help us occasionally. Okay, so I think this derivation is definitely more complex than our previous one. So you guys might want to rewind and watch it again. Make sure that you guys are practicing this. I would take out a blank sheet of paper and kind of practice writing out all these steps so that you're prepared for next class. So back to number one, um, we had already determined that d equals three. Okay, and they're asking us to find the sum of 300 terms. So just to kind of give us some context, now we've only seen arithmetic, but eventually we will have geometric. So I need to check, is it arithmetic, is it geometric? 
So that's the first step, seeing that it is arithmetic because we have a common difference. Second thing we're looking for, am I finding a term using the nth term formula or am I finding a sum? And whenever it gives us s, we know we're using the sum formula. So here's our sum formula, which, which once again we need to have memorized. s sub n equals n over 2 times the quantity 2 times a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to substitute stuff in. We're trying to find the sum after 300 terms is equal to 300 divided by 2 times 2 times negative 4 plus 300 minus 1 times our common difference, which is 3. Okay, so if we look, this problem in itself isn't that bad because I already have my unknown value isolated, so we just need to do some simple math here. So I get the sum after 300 terms is 150 times negative 8 plus 299 times 3. And when I go ahead and put that into my calculator, I end up getting that the sum after 300 terms is, let's see, 133,350. Now what we're going to see is that most of the problems that we have on our homework today is going, are going to be just like this. They're very straightforward just getting us used to using this formula. Of course, it's going to get more difficult as we mix stuff up, but I just really need to go ahead and memorize and know this formula very, very well. So now we're going to look at problem number two, and this is actually our final problem um, because it is super repetitive, but um, I'm going to go ahead and solve this one using two different methods because some of you guys may notice that it is a sub 12 and we're finding the sum of the 12th term. So we did learn that s sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And if you guys remember this formula, it becomes extremely, extremely simple. And um, to back up a step, we would need to be given information that this problem was arithmetic. Right now it is, but on a test, if this was all I was given, I would have no clue it was arithmetic, so I would need to go ahead and solve it using our arithmetic formulas and our geometric formulas. Good news today is it's nice and simple. It's only arithmetic, so I can just rely on this formula. So I would say S sub, and instead of N, I don't know why I wrote that, I am writing 12 equals 12 over 2 times negative 4 plus 29. So S sub 12 equals 6 times 25, which tells me that the sum after 12 terms is 150. So if you are good at memorizing, I would definitely recommend having this memorized. If you're not great at memorizing, there are a few formulas this chapter and I'm going to go through the other formula, um, like the one that we absolutely need to know, how we could use that to solve the same problem, just in case you didn't want to spend the time memorizing this. Okay, so now we're pretending like we forgot that formula, and I'm going to use our other one, which is s sub n equals n over 2 times 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so the sum after 12 terms is 12 over 2 times 2 times negative 4 plus 12 minus 1, and all of a sudden I have a problem because I don't know what D is. Okay, so what that means is I need to rely back on my formula, which was A sub N equals A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times D. So we're going to use this formula, which we previously learned, to find the common difference because I have the first term and I have another term in the sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and say 29 equals negative 4 plus 12 minus 1 times D. 
So 29 equals negative 4 plus 11D. 33 is 11D, so 3 is our common difference. So at that point, I can substitute 3 into our equation. Okay, so that's why this one is a little bit tougher, is because I have to use that extra step to find the common difference. Now I can go ahead and say 6 times negative 8 plus 33, which is 6 times 25, or 150. Okay, so we can go ahead and once again use either method. I get the same answer regardless. Okay, um, so this just gives us a quick overview. I don't have a ton of examples because it's super repetitive. Okay, so we're really just using this formula almost every single time. There are occasional times when I know the last term in the sequence where I can use that other formula as well. So on your homework tonight, um, make sure you're just practicing this. I think the toughest thing for you guys to memorize is how to derive this formula.